Hello everyone, and I'm happy to see so many here at the session. Hopefully you will learn something about chain streams. As you know, I have a MongoDB t-shirt, so I'm from that company. But we're going to talk about MongoDB chain streams and how you can use that, but also how we can use that in combination with Project Reactor, which is the reactive stream way of consuming events uh, and publishing. Yeah. Um, so my name is Pierre Peterson. I'm an advisor solutions architect at MongoDB. And if you have any questions about the session or just come to my booth and we can probably answer those. I only have 15 minutes, but let's get going. So we talk about what chain stream is, uh, look at some of the use cases that we are seeing that our customers are using chain stream for. And then I will use you in the audience, your use is what's a bad word, but you will help me in the audience to actually do a demo where we are going to use and demonstrate chain stream using a memento application, so a feedback application. So you will give me feedback. It can be good, it can be bad, and we'll showcase how we can use chain stream to actually visualize that. And then some additional resources. The code and everything I'm doing now will be available in a GitHub repository. I haven't had time to actually package that, but it will be available in the resource link that you see here. Oh, somebody's also coming outside. <laughs> so what is chain stream? Yeah. So MongoDB chain streams is a way of listening to changes in your documents. So if you have a relational, da relational database background, uh, wait, wait, before we continue, how many knows what MongoDB is? Okay, good, awesome. Then I don't have to explain that. So if we look at MongoDB and when you store a document in MongoDB, so every time you do a change to that document, for example, insert something or update something or delete something, you can listen to those changes and then trigger something to happen a function or anything else, yeah? And we are using MongoDB's chain streams API to be able to listen to those changes. And what we can do then is to, for example, have a microservice subscribing to those changes, and we can actually filter on those changes. We can say that I only want to subscribe on events that are equal to maybe a positive sentiment or something, you know, in the field or in the document or even the data type. But MongoDB chain, MongoDB chain streams also makes it possible for you to listen to other types of changes. So changes that has to do if you drop an index or if you create an index, yeah? So it's both on the document level, but also on, you know, indexes and such, configuration. And this helps you as a developer actually to build reactive real-time application because you can actually act on the event when it actually happens instead of polling data, yeah? Polling data and getting that. In this example, we have two microservices. One is listening to sentiment positive and the other is listening to negative. This is what I will also showcase in a demo. You will understand more when we come to that. Uh, we can also support Kafka. So MongoDB chain streams is possible for you to publish every changes that you happens in the document to a Kafka topic, yeah? And then you can subscribe to the Kafka topic or the other way around. Listen to a Kafka topic and ingest that into MongoDB. So what are the use cases we are seeing? So real time, of course, you know, you want to have a push notification. Maybe when you place an order and the order is shipped, you want to maybe have an email or a, you know, SMS text message where you need to pick it up. You can use ChainStream for this, yeah? And also to build a reactive system. So this is what I'm going to demonstrate, how you can use Project Reactor in Java and the reactive, you know, uh, reactive streams concepts to be able to utilize and uh, consume events uh, using that pattern, yeah? with Spring and Web Flux and Spring Boot applications. We can also do event-driven architectures, having microservices listening to each other data changes, if you want to do that. And also CDC, when we have do data sources we need to sync and you know, change data captures, we can do that with change streams. But also real-time analytics, and I think this is really interesting. So if you have, you are doing a payment with your card, you want to analyze that in real time, maybe apply a machine learning model to understand if that transaction is fraudulent, yeah? You could use then change stream to actually kick, and we actually showcase that, but I will not use ML model to showcase transactions, but I will use AVS Comprehend to analyze the text that you guys will be submitting, and then align analyze to that to see if it's positive or negative, yeah? If you're giving me positive feedback or negative feedback. And that's an AI, AVS Comprehend is AI service from AWS where you can actually do that. So let's look at some of the things. We talked about targeted changes. This means that you can actually listen to different fields or you know, not just get all of the, 
document. So if you have, for example, you want to listen to a specific field, if that field changes, then you only want to get that event triggered. Yeah? We can also, sorry, I was quick here. There is really what happens if one of the nodes goes down. So if you, in MongoDB, we have, have a three node replica set. So you have a primary and two secondary. So if the node goes down, you still won't be able to get that event through. So we can use resumability and resumable tokens to be able to ensure that you don't lose any events. And the events that are incoming is in total ordering, means that once it's not randomized, it's coming in the order that you actually publish the event, yeah? or the change happen. And it's also durable, because we have a three node replica set, we can then set the majority, so it means that two of the nodes needs to be persisted before the event can be consumed by anyone. Yeah? Um, Everybody knows what a tree node replica set is, or is it? I'm talking gibberish here. Maybe I'm assuming too much. Hands up. Do you know everyone know what a tree node replica set is? Okay, let me explain that. In MongoDB, we have uh, three node replica sets, and this is for high availability. Yeah? You have the primary node where you write and read your queries, you know, and then you have two additional nodes. So if the primary goes down, it can then fail over for the, from two of the secondaries to be a new primary, so you don't lose any data and still are available for the application. So it's our high availability concept, yeah. And security also, of course. We have the same, if you're using MongoDB and you have role-based access controls, you can use the same setup and same configuration to be able to configure what streams you can listen to, uh, if different microservices should be able to listen to different collections and such using the same setup that you do with the rest of the MongoDB deployment. And it's, of course, easy to use, yeah? I'm going to showcase with Spring Boot, but you can also use our MongoDB drivers uh, to, you know, just connect to that. We have support for many. Java, this is the Java conference, but we have support, of course, for any other language that you, you know, the biggest languages that you can have out there. And, of course, item potency is important, so if you rerun the event, it will be in the same state, yes? So let's look at Project Reactive and MongoDB. So does anyone, everyone know what Project Reactive is? I will, can, okay, good. So hope I don't say something that's wrong here. You can come and hit me after the, after the session here. I'm new to Project Reactive, guys, so. <laughs> so what my understanding is as late of Project Reactive is you have two models. If you look at the servlet model, the, you know, the classical Spring Web MVC model, it's a non-blocking architecture, yes. With the reactor or project reactor, we are trying to make it, uh, uh, sorry, it is blocking, not non-blocking. So servlet model is blocking, yeah. And when it comes to the project reactor, we are trying to create a non-blocking environment, yeah, to be able to uh, create a do asynchronous request without blocking the request, yeah. And this makes it more scalable, and we can actually listen to events. When changes happen, we can stream that back directly instead of waiting to pull off the data, load it into memory, and back to the client. Yeah? So it's the new way of consuming events and building event-based architectures. And the other thing that's great with Project Reactor is that it's like an abstraction layer. So you can use Project Reactor to actually listen not just to MongoDB change streams. So if you think about it, if you use our MongoDB driver, Chain streams is, you know, proprietary for MongoDB. Yeah, it's an implementation of streams for MongoDB. But if you want to use maybe Kinesis streams or another stream, then you can use Project Reactor to wrap that. That means you can have one uh, unified language to consume streams, regardless of its MongoDB chain streams or if it's a Kinesis stream yeah, or any other stream. Yeah. So Project Reactor helps you to wrap that in a unified way to consume and, you know, publish events. So I'm here now. If I feel like um, it's really quick, how many minutes have I left? Oh, that's great. Perfect. Yeah. So now we are going to build a Memento application. I have prepared that, of course. I'm mean, like a TV chef here. So what I have done is that you guys will have uh, access to a, a QR code, and you will then see a web application, a web page, be it a uh, text field where you can submit some feedback. I want you to write something good and something bad. Yeah? And what will happen then is that will be stored in a MongoDB collection that I call posts. Yeah? And then I will also listen to those changes using Amazon Event Bridge, which we have native integration with in MongoDB. And what will happen then with MongoDB Event Bridge that will trigger a Lambda function 
And that Lambda function then will actually query Amazon Comprehend, which is a service to analyze text. Yeah? So you can analyze your submissions. And this is an ML service, yes? And remember I talked about the credit card uh, setup or use case. And it will analyze the text and understand if it's a negative setting. If you write, write something like awesome, it will give a like positive, it will give a positive feedback and store that in a separate MongoDB collection called moderated. And I will listen to those changes and have a UI, two web browsers, where I will see all of the negative sentiments. You can see the web browser as a microservice, microservice A, and then microservice B, which will so showcase the positive sentiments. And what I'm trying to showcase here, well, what's the reason why? Well, it's a Memento application. You can apply this in many different use cases, but you know that it's real time and it's acting on when the actual change happens and we can integrate that with other services and not just, you know, it, maybe it wouldn't make sense just to have a trigger on a database collection, yes. So let's, let's and this is just a code, just to understand how easy it's to get going. So I'm using the reactive Spring Boot Web Flux framework. And as you can see in the first part here, let, I, I'm an old man, so I need to go read it here actually. So this is the aggregation, this is the filtering we are doing. So we're saying that we only want to get events that have sentiment equals to negative, yeah? And then we are creating some options, change stream options, to be supplied to the actual change stream that we are creating on the row 52 here. So here we're actually saying, create a change stream, try to listen to the collection that's moderated, yeah? This is where we store everything that's been uh, analyzed by uh, Amazon Comprehend. And then we want to actually, when that event happens, we want to output that back to the client. Yeah? And this is using the Spring Web Flux framework. So can you please ask you guys to, if you want, uh, scan this code. And you should see like, uh, and please don't input anything yet. Uh, wait, 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 not trigger happy. <laughs> and I will, I will start my screens here. I will go to negative sentiments. Oh, oh. oh, sorry guys. Mm -hmm. I can close this one. I don't need it. Yeah. As you can see, you're probably seeing this application in the middle. And I will also start the positive sentiment. So, so I have two browsers here. And as you can see, it's, I don't know if you see it, but it's actually streaming now. It's connected to endpoint, that's a Webflux endpoint. And now everything, as you can see, now you're typing, I'm getting the feedback here. So it's happening live here, I'm not pulling any data. Uh, and this is done using MongoDB change stream together with Amazon Comprehend. As you can see, it's giving me the negative and positive sentiments here. Yeah. And this is really scared because it's on event base. We don't pull anything and we don't have to really read anything into memory. Yeah, that was all. Actually, it was a quick demo. I only had 15 minutes. Hopefully, this is useful. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them in our booth or after the session. Thank you, guys, for coming. <laughs>